Body Zero, Radical Preparation for the Return of Christ. Chapter Three, Divine Pathos. Let me take you back to the 29th of March, 2014. I can't remember what, I think it was a Saturday actually. It was a spring day obviously in London and Mary and I had left the house to go to a little park that was just across the road to find some sunshine, some fresh air and to be honest, just a little bit of peace from the Twitter firestorm that had kicked off inside. You know when you get it, you know what it's like when you just have just have had enough of this this thing in your hand card called a smartphone. The social media. We'd come out of the house just to find some reprieve. And what had happened is that on the 29th of March 2014, as we should all know, the UK redefined uh, to find the law about what marriage is, so redefine the, the actual meaning of marriage. And um, Vicky Beeching, who will have been well known to many of you, had been berating the church that afternoon. I can't remember exactly word for word what she said on a tweet, but said something to the effect of that in years to come, so here we are, we're five years on from that, in years to come, the church were gonna bow their head in shame at taking so long to come to this point of having redefined marriage, redefined what God says about God. And so I was on my smartphone looking at this t this tweet. I think actually at the time Vicky and I followed each other. She probably hasn't got a clue who I am now. But I responded and I basically rebuked her for berating the church. And what Beeching did as a result was to draw quite ingeniously actually drew a lot of kind of celebrity, um, high profile um, animosity from celebrities and so on to my, and my Twitter feed just exploded and I was getting called this, that and that, I was being called all manner of things, it's the classic intolerant tolerance that's plaguing the UK. And so I'd done my part, I'd raised my, my dissenting voice above the din of the Colosseum as it were, and I rebuked Beeching for the antichrist narrative that she was espousing and we went outside and we were chilling out trying to at least and yet in me in my heart was this swirling distress and that's what this chapter is about divine pathos is i would say probably one of two major spiritual formations moments of spiritual formation in my life i'm 39 now and this is a, a spiritual formation really that's only happened in the last 18 months to understand the question, what does it mean to be prophetic? What does it really mean when Paul tells us all to eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially the gift of prophecy? What does that mean? And it was the years after that, and in the last kind of, as I've said, the last 18 months, I've really had a kind of mature level of understanding of, of the answer to that question. And it came through a book by a guy called Abraham Heschel, who some of you will have heard of. He was a Polish Jew, and back in 1979, he wrote this book called The Prophets, and I hadn't got a clue about this. I'd just gone one day in my distress at all this stuff that's going on in the UK and in the church, and the relative silence of the church to such mega changes. In my distress, and I don't use that word lightly, distress, uh, I went to Google and just wanted to find out about the prophets. What does it mean to be prophetic? What what does it mean to be a prophet in 2019? And I'm just going to read you a little a little excerpt here from the book, um, which is the the best way still that I can find to actually just read Heschel rather than paraphrase him. He starts his book called The Prophets by asking this question: What manner of man is the prophet? What manner of man is the prophet? And then this is what he goes on to say by way of an answer. Heschel says, the sorts of crimes and even the amount of delinquency that fills the prophets of Israel with dismay do not go beyond that which we regard as normal, as typical ingredients of social dynamics. To us, a single act of injustice, cheating, business, exploitation of the poor, is a slight, to the prophets, a disaster. To us, injustice is injurious to the welfare of the people. To the prophets, 
it's a death blow to existence. To us, an episode. To them, a catastrophe. A threat to the world. And when I read that, 18 months ago maybe, it was like a deposit of sanity to my mind at all the spiraling questions as to why was I feeling this sense of anger and indignation and distress about social cultural changes that were happening on our watch. This is five years ago, four years ago. So much has changed in that time and yet I've only just understood what it means and so Heschel goes on to explain that this, what it means to be a prophet, a prophetic person, somebody in the New Testament who's encouraged to eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially the gift of prophecy, is somebody who has this pathos, this sense of divine pathos, a supernatural gift from God to even a fraction, just a sense of empathy and sympathy with the suffering heart of God. And so I've come to understand and realise what it means to be a prophetic person is that divine pathos, it's a suffering and empathy in response to the mega changes, the, the, the significant changes that we're seeing in the years in which we're living. And make no mistake, for the number one marker, the number one pointer that God has given the planet, i.e. marriage, as the number one pointer to who God is, as John Piper says, a parable of permanence. For that to be redefined on our watch is of the most significant importance, I can't even tell you. And so, for there to be a corresponding path of suffering, a distress within the prophetic people of God is more than appropriate. That's what this chapter is about. And I pray that it would begin to just pique your interest in terms of why you may have secretly, quietly been feeling distressed, angry, indignant, confused. The LGBT narratives are just sprawling through society like a plague. And so it's time for the prophetic people of God to rise up. Father, we thank you that you are sovereign and nothing happens without your permission and that you are fully aware of every moment in history, you're fully aware of every scheme of the enemy and beyond that you have made it so that we are not unaware of the devil's schemes. And Lord, we look at a world that is far from you, a culture and a society in the UK and in the nations that is far from you, leaders who have apparently no clue about you, the King of Kings. Lord, and we pray now, we take time to pray for the UK church, that there would be within her a growing sense of eagerly designing the gift of your spirit, especially the gift of prophecy, a willingness to share in that suffering of your heart for your people and Lord uh, a corresponding urgency to live boldly and faithfully without compromise in the day that we're living in I pray for more mouthpieces I pray for more um, for more people to be able to rise up and confound the words and the schemes of the enemy by your precious Holy Spirit. I pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, would you move in your body once again and cause there to be this suffering in an appropriate sense and an appropriate fear of the Lord. We pray for your glory, Jesus. Amen.